So today we'll be talking to you about uh, Jobopedia and uh, the concept of it. It started with uh, Monopedia and we thought it was a cool idea and then we should try it down in uh, Johannesburg and therefore we came with Jobopedia. Uh, uh, what are we aiming with this uh, pilot? No, we're not trying to prove how efficient the QR code is. That, that having has already been explored uh, before. What we are trying to do with it is to build a Wikimedia community and establish relationships with LAM institutions in Johannesburg. So the pilot sites that we identified together with the city of Johannesburg and the Johannesburg Heritage Foundation are 12 pilot sites, amongst which is uh, the Desmond Tutu House, the Satya uh, which is the Gandhi House in Johannesburg, and uh, the Rahima Musa House as well. Okay, so there are some of the pictures that, uh, of the venues that we are putting here at uh, our Jogipedia plugs. And we're doing it next to the blue plugs, which we got permission to do it with the city of Johannesburg. So Danny will take us all through the next set of our slides. So um, when we uh, started the, the Jobopedia project, uh, Dean Sony went on TV and did a presentation uh, telling people about Jobopedia and what we're doing and the QRpedia aspect of it. And um, immediately someone who had a rather different idea sometime in the past sent us a letter. Um, and this is an excerpt from the letter. And one of the things that she wanted to say is that we should consider buying this concept from it. So we took a look at her patent. And we discovered that her patent was for someone to read a plaque, call a number on the plaque, and listen to the phone, and use um, touchtone to dial into it um, and to find out more about the topic. And so we figured that if this covered our project, it would cover almost anything that you did with any cell phone to get any kind of guided tour. And so we wrote them a letter as well. We used our, our, our Wikimedia South Africa um, credentials and we told them that we're a volunteer driven non-profit making organization. We're not planning to make money out of this. So no sense in us buying it. And we told her that we are confident that there is no infringement of their patent. And if they have any reason to believe there is, they should explain it to us. And that was the last we heard of them. So what stakeholders did we identify to do this project? It's a huge project, Johannesburg is a big city, so we talked with the city of Johannesburg firstly to get permission to uh, put anything onto the, the sites that we identified. We also spoke to the Johannesburg Heritage Foundation, which gets a very good archives of these heritage sites. And then we also had a discussion amongst ourselves, so we was Wikimedia South Africa, do we really want to take this project on we have enough capacity, is it gonna work? We also talked to other Wikimedia chapters uh, to see if we can get support from them as well. And uh, finally, we put a grant application to Wikimedia Foundation, which, which was accepted and we started our pilot. And we want to give a special thanks to Wikimedia Switzerland for funding the production of the drugs. Now David will tell you about the editor funds. So we've run a number of editathons since we started this project. Um, the first one was at Museum Africa, which is the largest Africana museum in the country. Um, it's located in Johannesburg, and it is in fact the historical site itself. 
Um, and in that editathon, we even had a number of passers by. It's a great advantage having an editathon in a working museum because the passers by are naturally interested in the kind of things that you're doing. So we actually managed to activate a few people in that editathon. Um, we had one at the Meadowlands High School. Now, the Meadowlands High School is a very significant historical site. That is where um, the Soweto riots, which kind of um, were one of the last death knells of the apartheid system, sort of a bit way back, um, where they were, where they were sparked off. Um, so we had a death from where we had um, people from the school, um, headmaster, and so on, all taking part. And then. We also had quite a successful editathon at the Satyagraha House, which is um, the house where Gandhi stayed. Um, uh, not many people, or I suppose many people know, but not everyone knows that Gandhi actually stayed in South Africa for a number of years, and um, his sort of his social awareness was built in South Africa, um, seeing our racial policies that we had at the time. And we had people from a number of countries there, and we have more events coming. Okay, so what do the numbers say since you started the project in that uh, seven languages uh, interact with the Jogopedia? We have had 19 new articles spread around the seven languages. The good thing about it is that English is the only big language uh, that was involved in this. The other six languages are small local languages. We've had eight improved existing articles. We, have, we, have, we now have one new active user in the Zulu Wikipedia, which we didn't have for the competition. We have two heritage websites that have adopted the Creative Commons uh, licensing, uh, which is a very good thing for us. We had one radio interview, one TV interview. We had 24 new photographs on matter that have used that have been used now in articles. And uh, David will take us to so um so what we what we had again is uh, because of the, all the bureaucracy in the city of Johannesburg, you cannot pass anything <coughs> through the politicians without someone sitting in and doing a vote on it. So this is now Geography as a pilot project has gone through the Johannesburg mayoral committee vote, which means that uh, the next uh, approval from that would be a fiscal uh, vote for them to put money into the project, so we don't spend our money anymore doing future projects, which is a very good thing for us. Then there's also, we've already started talks with the next uh, phase for Jogipedia, which would be rolling the project out onto other heritage sites, but doing this on the existing blue flags that they have instead of producing a separate tiles onto that. And obviously the overheads there would be to the city of Johannesburg. And uh, we also have them uh, agreeing to release very good high value images, uh, one of which is the original image of the Orlando Stadium in Soweto. So that's a very good thing for us. Challenges ahead, then we'll take this one. So um, our next challenge is going to be to take this away from Johannesburg, well, not take it away from Johannesburg, but to move it, to move it beyond Johannesburg into the Cape. So we're planning to have a Capepedia as well. Um, we have to mentor the new editors because we've brought new editors into the project now and if we just leave them on their own, they're quite likely to, to stop editing. And it's very important to continue this work. Um, we also want to continue the collaboration efforts with the other chapters because other chapters have either gone further than us in these projects and have developed um, more, so we've learned from them. But, but there also there are other chapters who would like to start this kind of thing, would like to know about challenges of doing it in a less developed environment than, for example, on Wikipedia. And the other thing is we want to maintain contact with the GLAM institutions that will ultimately be supporting uh, creation of new content and will be the focus of learning uh, with these projects. So, the big question. Are Wikitowns a good idea? I don't think we want to argue the merits of the Wikitown concept itself, but uh, in our case, if the end justifies the means, we will do it. Uh, we need to build a community, and if we can do it through a Wikitown, which might not be a very efficient way of doing it, but probably the only way available to us, then yes, for us, it is a good idea. 
And uh, finally, if you really want to get involved with uh, Jobpedia, you can visit our GLAM page on uh, Wikipedia, uh, the English Wikipedia part. We also have on our own uh, Jobpedia uh, website. So thank you very much for listening to our presentation and watching our presentation. We want to thank the Wikimedia Foundation, the Wikimedia Switzerland, and the Wikimedia UK for helping us to uh, do something as cool as this. Thank you. Do it again. We would um, definitely produce the flux locally because um, with the time frame that we had, it was not feasible to get someone to do the uh, uh, the model and to do it locally. So we had to get it from the UK. But then that also had um, um, what's that word I'm looking for? It had uh, immigration costs and so on, which we didn't oh, yeah, have. Yeah, for it. Yes. So that's the only thing we do differently. But however, the idea of the, the editor tones, uh, the concept of, uh, of, of collaborating with GLAMS is working perfectly, perfectly well. Also, one thing we've done is we have um, quite a surprisingly active um, Facebook page for South African GLAM projects um, that has grown out of this. So our Geopedia Facebook page is getting quite a bit of interest, and we're working together because the, the reason that it actually went to Facebook is because the people that do the blue blocks on the historical buildings, they have their own Facebook page that are quite active, so they're a natural tie-in to this kind of project, so we can involve them. Yes, I have two questions, actually. And the first one is if you're going to expand it to more places in the world. The second one, if you have, have had already or are planning to at this kind of international conference, getting people involved in writing new articles in other languages, so you get them more Okay, the answer to your first question is are we going to expand it to other areas of Johannesburg? Um, the answer is yes, depending on the mayoral vote that's coming through. Uh, because the, the whole concept of GLAM collaboration is that we give something to them and they give something back to us. In this case, it would have been nice to get some money from them to pay for the tasks, but it wasn't possible to do because of all the bureaucracy that goes into it. It was the end of their financial year, so we couldn't pass the vote through. But uh, in rolling it forward, we would like them to take to bring in something to the table because of all the publicity we give to them. Uh, it looks like it's, it's still a bit of a one-sided, and we'd like them to come to the table. But uh, we've already identified sites, possible sites that we can roll this uh, over to, uh, including the Nelson Mandela House in Alexandra, which is a very close to Johannesburg. The second question is, uh, are we going to run an international editing competition? Possibilities, yes, uh, we are looking at, at that. We firstly want to see how much of, of local um, participation we can get, especially for, lo for local small languages, <coughs> uh, because the access to that information is very critical in our view to the local communities there, uh, to have it, to have access to them, especially as, as well as in their own languages. A uh, good example is the James Panza House. Everybody knows about it in Soweto, but nobody knows where it started. And there was no article on James Panza House on Wikipedia in any language before the Now they know. Yes. Um, you mentioned blue parks. Yes. That's the discussion we're having with, uh, especially with the Johannesburg Heritage Foundation, because there's two blue flags uh, problems that are happening in Johannesburg. Uh, you've got the city of Joburg uh, blue flags, and you have the Johannesburg Heritage Foundation blue flags, which uh, have sort of not been talking to each other only until recently. Uh, luckily, we haven't had double planning of a building, <laughs> but yeah. Um, so with the Giant Big Heritage Foundation, that's the logical conclusion they arrived to after seeing what the cost of these plugs were. Uh, with the Johannesburg, city of Johannesburg itself, uh, it, it is all pending the mayor of 
if they do vote on it, then yes, they will just put the QR on the card. We don't have to spend on it. We can just do um, uh, events around the park. So, so here's an example of the city park together with our park there in the corner. Any more questions? We still have two minutes. Mm -hmm. You mentioned the cost for the flags. How much are they? Uh, the cost for the flags. I will let you know. I've got the spreadsheet. <laughs> but it, it, uh, it's the reason why we actually opted to do it in the UK. Because in, uh, in South Africa, it would have cost us about uh, 400 pounds per plug, whereas we're getting it at something like a ridiculous price of 25 to 50 pounds per plug when you do it in the UK. So even considering the cost of the, um, of the uh, customs and exchange, it still worked out cheaper to make the plugs in the UK and to buy them down as well. Yes, that's right. So if there are no more questions, that's it. Thank you very much.